all right what's good i'm pretty sure this is like my ninth time recording this because i have been like autistically spazzing out and like coughing all over the place and uh, miss speaking every five seconds so hopefully that doesn't happen this time welcome this tier list is going to be about muscle groups that people care about specifically in high school because the gym and the gym culture has uh, permeated and invaded every part of our lives the part that i can attest to is high school because that's where i fucking am at this point in my life um and i can say some things about personal experience about what people actually care about there now let's go through the tiers non-negotiable these are things that um pretty much will hurt you if you have underdeveloped or if you don't meet a certain criteria for and uh if you again have these fucking underdeveloped this should be your priority now the girls might actually care tier um I know it sounds crazy. You, if you have these areas very well developed, you may get a compliment or two. And uh, I'm not gonna say Riz because that wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't be very scholarly of me, and that's not a very academic term. So I'm not gonna say the word Riz, but it may help you with that as well. Now the male attraction tier, this is uh, shit that you may get a few compliments for, that you will definitely get compliments for uh, from your guy friends, whether they're joking or not. That's up to fucking viewer interpretation. That's up to you to um, decipher. But if you're into that thing, yeehaw, go for these things. And if you're not into that thing, it's, it's still kind of nice because it's like, you know, you, you get respect for it. Now, the noticeable tier, people are going to definitely be looking at it. Um, that sounds a little weird. Noticeable tier is what it sounds like. It's going to be noticeable, but it's not going to be like the people are going to be like, wow, holy fuck, Lois, this is such a good muscle group you have. It's just going to be like, they're like, huh, that's kind of cool. Now, the doesn't hurt tier is like, oh, yay wow, you have this, that's so cool, but, but people aren't going to be noticing it, it's only mostly going to be you, it's like a muscle group maybe that you, like, have a certain passion for training, sure, go fucking do that, but, like, it doesn't hurt, but no one's going to be caring that much. Now, the irrelevant tier, these are things that you can pretty much completely ignore, have completely underdeveloped, and uh, no one's going to care that much, and if they do care that much, they're pretty much fucking, they're also going to be gym goers. These are, again, to, like, the average fucking high schooler retard who, like, doesn't go, to, doesn't know that much about the gym. Um, if they do know that much about the gym, it's probably gonna go in the male attraction tier. Those people are probably gonna be caring the most. And the irrelevant tier, no one's gonna fault you for having them underdeveloped. And so, if you so choose, and if this is the only thing that you care about, go fucking forget about those. Let's get into the tier list proper, starting with the two non-negotiables. This is a skeleton for Sea of Thieves from Sea of Thieves, and this represents being anorexic. You cannot be fucking anorexic. That time is long long gone. When in quarantine, you can just be 110 pounds at fucking 6 foot 2 and still get so much respect and people think like, wow, you're so jacked because I can see your abdominal wall. Um, no. You're good. You're good, bruh. You can gain some weight. And if you are a Sea of Thieves skeleton in 2024, you will most likely not be getting the most respect. Now, the second and last thing in the non-negotiable tier is this right here, Jeff Nippard. Jeff Nippard has a fucking thick ass neck that I'm sure he's flexing here, and maybe with a little bit of Photoshop. Uh, the standard for this is that you have a neck that's like in line with your jawline. If you have a pencil neck, if you have a fucking little 10 inch um, circumference, there people are most likely not gonna be taking you seriously. The reason I say this is because I was a fucking pencil neck for most of my life um, until the past like, actually past like few weeks, so if there's one like tip I can give to actually grow your neck, um, it's none of these hundred rep neck workouts. I'm sure those work if you like dedicate to them for a long time. I've done them for like a month at a time. Didn't really do much for me. What actually helped me was competition. I now play volleyball against fucking other schools. I'm ass at the game still, um, but that doesn't matter because I am competing. And I don't know if this is some testosterone bro science, but I think that really has helped in uh, developing my neck to a great degree. So go try that, go compete in something, and then you will get this fucking yeehaw. Alright, now that we have um, covered the, our bases here of the non-negotiables, you can actually start to be taken seriously, and we can get onto the tier list proper. Now, the first muscle group that we're going to be ranking here, um, I'm not going to say yacht again, that would be very unprofessional of me, but this right here is sticking out to me. Uh, no pun intended. Now, this... Glutes go straight in the fucking male attraction tier because I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've like bent over to pick something up or like squatted down and people have just said yacht. Now, this may be in a joking way, whatever, but people only say that to like uh, fellows who have like 
relatively well developed in glutes. And it sounds pretty fucking. It sounds so weird to like be calling them glutes, but like you know that's like that's the terminology I will be using here. I'm not gonna be saying like yeah, fat ass because that would be again unprofessional and not the vibe I'm going for. This place is this beautiful muscle group directly in the male attraction tier. Now, what else stands out? Let's just get all the leg stuff out of the way first. Um, let's go to calves. Here they are. Calves go straight in the noticeable tier. If you have well-developed calves, people may say something about it once or twice, but it's not like a make or break thing whatsoever. And if you don't have them developed, I don't think it's gonna hurt you that much. Maybe one fucking asshole um, who's been like training them for like three years straight but hasn't seen any results, so he's mad. Uh, maybe one guy like that is gonna be like, hey, your calves are small, but like, are, are you really gonna care about what that guy has to say? I mean, yeah, train your calves, sure, but they are definitely not gonna make or break you. Like, these things up here, or like the nice fucking voluptuous, uh, yeah, that. Now, quads and hamstrings, unfortunately, go st directly into the irrelevant tier. I don't know why I stutter there. Uh, these muscle groups are fucking great for athleticism, but I said I won't be repeating that, so I guess I will not. So looking purely from the standpoint of someone who was in high school, who just cares about, like, attention from other retards, uh, yeah, they're pretty much irrelevant. Nobody's gonna care. Nobody's gonna be like, wow, you have such nice upper hamstring development. Um, if you have, like, pencil legs, sure, it's, it's probably not gonna make you feel better uh, as a lifter who knows about it. But for the vast majority of the public, that's not where, where they're going to be focused on. And therefore, they are completely fucking irrelevant. Now we can get on to the upper body portion. Here is where I, here is where I plateaued last time, because I misspoke or like stuttered really bad or something, so I fucking restarted the recording here. Let's see if I can get past it this time. I believe in myself. I hope you do as well. Now let's start off with the forearms. The forearms are going to be our first muscle group, and the girls might actually care here. That is because these are one of the few things that I have actually gotten fucking compliments on, or just like looks, um, and forearm size isn't really as important as veins. Now you need to have the muscles developed enough so that the veins get pushed to the surface, and that you can have like pythons, no pythons isn't the proper term, so you can just have fucking like worms in your skin, you can have veins, they're gonna be cool, they're gonna be noticed, um, and believe it or not, yeah, that's one of the highest ranking muscle groups. Now, again, if this is for pure bodybuilding, um, if you just had very developed glutes and forearms, that, that would look a little bit weird. <laughs> and if you just ignored your legs, ignored your calves, everything else. But you have to understand this is from the perspective, again, of fucking high school. Yeehaw, let's move on to the rest of the body. Um, triceps. Triceps, this is going to piss off a lot of people, because, especially lifters, because a lot of economy goes into training this muscle group. And the whole meme of, like, triceps are two-thirds of the arm. <laughs> I'm gonna put them in the noticeable tier. Uh, people will not care that much. I'm gonna be honest, if your triceps are developed, especially if they're overdeveloped, um, and you get that weird, like, blubbery arm shit that Hamza was talking about, that's not gonna be doing you any favors. So I'm gonna be putting them in the noticeable tier, as in they help out uh, to make your arm look bigger. Um, and that's definitely going to be nice, but they should not be a top priority if, again, this is what you care about. Now, this is just what's sticking out to me now. I think this represents, like, back thickness. It's really fucking weird how, like, uh, it's split up here because the way it's split up makes it look like it's only, like, your the traps and then your lats, and those are the only things in your back. Um, again, if I were to make this tier list or the images for it, that's not how I would split them up, but this is what we're going to deal with. So this upper... I guess this represents like back thickness, upper back, fucking lower traps, whatever. This I'm going to be putting in the noticeable tier as well. Because unfortunately, uh, this is not this is not like the, what people care about the most. This hurts me deeply as I'm an upper back enthusiast and like lat enthusiast. I just, I just love fucking training the back. Um, no matter what form, what like muscle group in there, I, I just love it all. It, just give me, give me a row, give me a pull up and just fucking... That's all I need. But, again, for this criteria, very sadly, the upper back goes in the noticeable tier. Now, lats, um, this goes a little bit higher. This goes in the male attraction tier. Because if you're, if you're fucking wide, if you got a nice V taper, the guys will probably know that that means that you have some nice lats. The fucking, it doesn't go in this tier. Um, because, you know, people, 
<laughs> especially if they don't like go to the gym, don't really know what like makes a V taper. But if you have other guys who go to the gym and you have some nice fucking glutes and also lats, uh, people are gonna definitely pay attention to that at least a little bit and be like, oh shit, you're wide. Can you do a lat spread, please? Haha, <laughs> that looks so funny. So let's go in that tier. Now the bicep, the bicep. Um, again, this is not really about size, but about whether or not you have the bicep vein, the fucking fabled. I don't know why that's just a straight line. Have you guys ever thought about that? That like all these other veins in your body run like perpendicular or some shit or like you know, they just run like a diagonal or really squiggly and shit and then you just have the bicep vein which is just straight that's a little weird in my opinion but that's not the point the point is that if you have that bicep vein that's definitely going to stick out you're going to get a few compliments and uh, that's definitely going to help your chances with the people concerned with the people that this tier concerns so the forearm and bicep are going to be way more important in my opinion than the tricep for at least getting people to fucking, you know, pay attention and, like, care about your arm development. Because, um, in the movies, this is, they rarely have, like, some fucking superhero with, like, who's, like, giga-yoked with, like, triceps. Out the, up the wazoo, as fucking Eric Bugenhagen likes to say. They usually focus on the front, on the fucking chest and arms, that shit, that's where that whole stereotype came into existence. So definitely prioritize the forearms and the bicep. Um, should I put these in order? Yeah, probably. Upper traps go on the top of noticeable tier. And then triceps, actually no triceps go here. And then uh, the calves go at the end of the noticeable tier. Let's get a doesn't hurt muscle. Um, actually, the last three are all pretty important. So um, I'll put calves in the doesn't hurt tier because to be honest, they're not that noticeable unless they're like extremely well developed. Now, next up is shoulders. Shoulders, I'm tempted to put, like, between this and this. Uh, yeah, sure. Shoulders are what, like, the girls are probably going to be fucking thinking of when they think of, like, a V-taper. They're not going to be thinking of lats. And so if you have some nicely developed shoulders, uh, you're going to... I've been called, like, broad. Again, I'm objectively fucking small. But uh, this is just... I've, like, gotten onto the whole trend of the gym a little bit before most people. And so in that initial few months where I just had, like, some semblance of, like, any development, any fucking veins, where, like, the majority of the population didn't even know what a bench press was, like, I got, I got called, like, broad once, and I think that was because of my shoulders, which, if I go to a gym, I get absolutely turbo-mogged into oblivion by everyone. I have to preface that, I'm not calling myself big here yet, but, again, shoulders are very important here, if going by our criteria. Now, next up is the fabled chest. Uh, this goes, I think, at the top of the male attraction tier. Um, as everyone uh, is obsessed with their fucking bench numbers, everyone really likes their flies, really likes training chest for some reason. Obviously, push-up numbers is like an epic status symbol. If you can do like over 40, you're fucking cracked. Uh, so I'm going to be putting chest at the top of the male attraction tier. And if you have fucking huge ass watermelons people are probably going to be thinking huh nice voice crack people are probably going to be thinking like huh uh, this guy can probably push a bunch of weight on bench and that's pretty cool i should probably i should probably like you know give them a squeeze if they're men obviously because that's just what we do so this goes at the top of male attraction tier but is not quite as important as these other things i've never gotten like a genuine like charged compliment for like uh, <laughs> my chest or like any of these um, that aren't like in these tiers or maybe the top of this one. Now, last but not least, is going to be the abs. Uh, no surprise, this is a fucking poster child of like uh, muscularity and development. Again, you don't need to be having like bulbous fucking blocky ass liver king esque bald omni man ab development, but if you just have some sort of leanness. And they're visible to some degree, while also you're not being a complete skeleton. That's going to serve you very, very well. So the ideal uh, combination is that you're not a complete 110-pound fucking, like, anorexia uh, patient. You have some sort of neck development, and you just have, like, forearm veins, bicep veins, a little bit of fucking shoulder development, and then obviously abs, and then you will be pretty much set. And then add in these muscle groups if you care about other men complimenting you. And if, for whatever reason, um, you care about other things, such as athleticism, fucking health, longevity, um, strength, training, 
These are all very, very important muscle groups, but they are not, uh, those are not the criteria that we are ranking these by. So here's the tier list. I hope you enjoyed. Probably could have like recorded a tiny bit better audio wise. That's okay. I'm learning. We're all learning here. If you have any comments about how to make this video better, fucking <laughs> leave those in the description. I will read them. Please do not say the n-word in the comment as YouTube will delete the comment and therefore I will not be able to read it. Whereas otherwise I would have been able to and I would have laughed very hard. So that's it. Uh, enjoy. I kind of forgot how to do a outro for this. Hope you enjoy this tier list. Hope you now have a better idea of what to prioritize if these are your priorities, if like attraction from other people um, it is a priority in your life. Go fucking work on these, okay? And get some motivation somehow. Go fucking look at Jay Cutler chest workout. Go look at um, some random ass calisthenics person doing leg raises for your ab motivation. Go look at like, uh, you know, a grip competitions for like veiny ass forearms or some shit. Go, go live your life. <laughs> go have fun. Train these muscle groups. I'm done yapping for the day. Um, I wonder, can I get out of this full screen? Yeah. Sat skeleton. Alright, enjoy. Goodbye. Peace.